Well, hello, internet friends near and far. Welcome to another episode of Parks and Conversation. This is a podcast where we watch an episode of the NBC classic Parks and Recreation, and then we talk about it, hence the conversation. And the people conversing, are, it includes me, I'm Jason, and I'm joined all the way at, uh, by Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. The thing about this conversation is I'm in it. <laughs> yes. With, with Nailed you. It. Nailed and we, it. We talk. Yeah. So, so so good, Lee. Yeah, we've been doing uh, 70-something episodes of this Parks and Conversation podcast, and we're still terrible at conversing. <laughs> and it, that, that one was all on me. <laughs> well, one, one of us is. Yeah, we'll let the listener I, decide. I mean me. <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> listener, <laughs> let well, us a, know who you think. Yeah. Do, no. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, we were asking for a podcast beef. <laughs> Uh, who do you want us to be a podcast beef with? But hey, listener, maybe you want Jeremy and I to be adversaries. Plot twist. <laughs> it'd wow. Be, it'd be exciting. Parks and, parks and arguments. <laughs> yeah, dude. It'd be a sports uh, sports radio uh, type <laughs> podcast at that point. I uh, Yeah, dude, March Madness is coming. It is. I'm so excited. Because it is March 4th as we record this. Yes. 2022. Yes. Yeah, for the future listener who's like, maybe you're listening to this in an August sometime, and you're like, March Madness? Exactly. No, it's not. <laughs> so yeah, it is March 4th currently uh, as we're recording. But I uh, I was watching the new Picard, and it's on the Paramount service. And so then I was mm-hmm. like, oh, Paramount is CBS. When is March Madness? Because <laughs> it doesn't start it doesn't start at the beginning of March, which I, I find frustrating. And it actually ends in April, which I also find frustrating. Um, yeah. But, uh, they're in the they're in their conference tournaments right now. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting times. This is uh, one of the times where my family we actually talk to each other <laughs> about things, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we all have our favorite teams. Jocelyn always chooses Butler. I always choose Xavier. <laughs> they never do well. They always get in, and then they never go as far as I want them to go. But I want you know the mutants to win. So, speaking of the card uh <laughs> charles yeah because because the wolverines always beat them i know yeah but when the cyclopses come into i mean they're a much more strategically minded team the cyclops cyclope cyclopodes um so <laughs> cyclopi cyclopi yeah uh i'm excited for that but i'm also excited for this episode of parks and recreation because we are looking at season ben's, five ben's epi- parents wow episode voice six. Are pretty bad it's all right man it's all right just Woo! You know, I'm excited. Body is changing. Pumped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Ben. Hey, parents, everybody. Uh, he is uh, Ben is a child of divorce, and he has mentioned this in the past. Um, but uh, he, uh, we've never actually met his parents up until this point. We don't know the depth of their dysfunction, and uh, so today we get to uh, learn about it, and it's going to be a real thing. That we enjoy together. Now, uh, Jeremy, I know I didn't ask you this ahead of time, so I'm putting you on the spot. But does Boom. this episode, I love it. does this episode of Parks and Recreation, create any feelings in your in your heart and mind from a different show uh, that could also have this kind of tension, comedy, in particular? It's a pop quiz. Uh, pop quiz. I feel like I'm going to fail on this one. Uh, it- like I okay, so we just I just watched the dinner party. That's the one uh, episode. <laughs> was, are you serious? Yeah, <laughs> we I just watched it with the the kids last night. I'm dead serious, uh, and yes. uh, you did not listener. I we did not talk about this at all. And the, our, <laughs> like my like at the end, my my youngest was like, "That was really sad." I was like, "I know, wasn't it great?" Like they they're the, the way they argue and their the, the logic behind their arguments yes. is just it's so it's so. I'm talking about the office one too. It's amazing. I laugh. I, I haven't seen that, that episode in a while. I laugh so hard. It's so funny. That episode of the office is one of the most painful and hilarious wrapped up it together in one thing. And I, yeah. So as I was watching this, I was like, I'm going to ask Jeremy if he feels the same way about this episode <laughs> that I feel about it. Like it's, it's all, like this is this is the dinner party episode of Parks and Recreation, and 
it is, I think, one of the episodes that will stand up. I'm, I'm planting a flag. It will stand up as, a, as a, an episode that people will remember years from now, and they will say things like, she's important to me. That is my claim. Oh, hey, we're back. Listener, I hope you enjoyed last week's mini episode. And uh, here's the rest of it, because we're going to keep talking about that episode, season five, episode six. Uh, and so we are jumping in again. And Jeremy, uh, last we uh, heard from you, you said, I lost you. I can't hear you. Mere, mere seconds ago. And, uh, but to us, it seems like a week. Yes. Uh, and to the listener, it will also seem like a week because I'm going to keep it on that schedule. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So uh, we were talking about the dinner party in the office and how this is that episode and um, like that awkwardness of family dysfunction. And so, uh, yeah, Jeremy, you don't know anything about family dysfunction, do you? Um, not not so much. I've seen some movies. Good, good, good. About good. it, read some books. Yeah, there's some, some some plays. Right. I mean, in in both of our experiences, families just get along great all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No Especially one ever disagrees. Get-togethers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Super yeah. fun. Yeah. Extended family, always just right there for you. Support. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just jump into this because it's. So this is a hard episode to even kind of connect with for me. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> totally awkward. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like, I guess this is funny. Uh, yeah. Does this I don't happen know. to people? Mm. I don't know. But uh, this episode is important to me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right. So it starts off with, and we're just going to go run through it because all the things, we're not going to do A plot, B plot, C plot, because it all just kind of overlaps again. So we're just going to run through. Uh, and talk about the different things that we uh, we we noticed. Uh, so it starts out with uh, Leslie and Ben telling everybody that they got engaged um, and uh, sharing the great news. And um, and people are talking about the different experiences in the first place. Uh, April is talking about when Andy proposed. He gave April a ring pop, uh, but he ate it first. So it Aww. was just a uh, plastic ring, I but- guess, at that point. Which sounds like Andy. Um, and then the uh, April asks, like, how did Ben propose? And Leslie starts getting into the history of Ben's family all the way from uh, 1832. Jeremy? That's a long time. Okay. You paused, man. <laughs> did you hear me? Yeah, 1832. Okay. Uh, I just... Did I, was I right? Yeah, you were right. Okay. I was paying attention. <laughs> okay. I just I feel like I feel like I was in the back of the class and you were quizzing me. Like 1832, dude. I'm here. Okay. Um sorry. I, I lost you again. I'm a little nervous. So <laughs> gun, gun shy with the internet. Yeah. So I stopped talking and then there was just nothing on your, your end. So I was a little nervous. So all right. I was waiting for the rest of the story from 1832. <laughs> I was, in, I was like, you were weaving this tapestry of, of, of history for the Wyatt clan. And I was, I was enraptured. Well, I'm glad that you did that. Cause I'm not going to edit this out eh, because what <laughs> your experience was just like everybody else's experience. When a- Leslie started telling the story, they started walking away and I was like, Oh, this is happening. Huh? All right. <laughs> and so, the awesome um, thing is now, now I can walk away. So keep, just keep yeah. talking. All right. So, um, so everybody starts walking around, but then it goes to the talking head where Ben and Leslie are talking about how excited they are and how she's shouting it from the rooftops. And Ben points out that she has, they'd be getting noise complaints. Um, and so this is a really big deal. So they go, they next go to Chris who, you know, Chris has been having a rough patch in his life and he's currently seen Dr. Dr. Richard Nygaard, uh, for his counseling and that's uh, being helpful. Uh, in some ways, but uh, he is so excited that he was the first person that Ben and Leslie decided to tell. Um, hmm. And so she, he wants to go around with ev- with them while they tell everybody else. And so now uh, Leslie and Ben have to pretend like they haven't told anybody before um, so that Chris can be happy. Um, and so they go back to the parks team and they tell them that they are engaged uh, and uh, everybody's like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and then so Chris is trying to rally them all up again. 
And then uh, Andy comes in and Chris tells him Leslie and Ben are engaged. And then he's like, oh, you guys again. <laughs> uh, and so that's the cold open. So, so exciting. So, so happy. So, um, yeah. So then it goes to uh, the episode proper. And they're throwing an engagement party. Um, and uh, they're going over the, the RSVP list. And Larry Bird hasn't replied. And I just love that Leslie points out that he's notoriously last minute, uh, which is like, how would, how would she know that? So, um, and then they are going through and, and they ask about, uh, Ben's ideas and he has two ideas. First of all, put Twizzlers on the candy table cause they're a Twizzlers family and then cancel the party because his parents can't be in the same room together. And so, uh, Leslie is not having it. Mm -hmm. are you are you joking with me no i'm I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for you to keep talking so that i can jump in and say well the, what's the what's the most important thing here what is the most twizzlers, important thing here twizzlers versus red vines okay all right where are you where do you land on this red vines 100 percent. they come in a tub i mean so twizzlers, if, it, if it came twizzlers is like, it and twizzlers also came in a tub would that change the the calculus on this yeah because they're a copycat so you would still so, hate them yeah. Yeah. All Twizzlers right. are like fake licorice. They like they have fake licorice flavor. Like red vines are the real licorice flavor. Well, technically, that's also not true because real licorice is black licorice. It's red red licorice flavor. Okay. Yeah. So so the red pretender licorice of red vines is what you prefer. No, no, Twizzlers is the pretender. Red Vines is original. Plus, you can drink, you can put it, it's like hollow, so you bite the ends off and you can drink Dr. Pepper out of it. Yeah, but I, I need to get back to back to basics here because Red Vines are not original to licorice. You got to go with black licorice. It's delicious. It's a candy that tastes like medicine. Like black licorice? Yeah. No, that's fine too. I like that too. All right. But I'm just saying between the red licorices, like now, Twizzlers is the fake one. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. The one thing that Twizzlers has going for it though is it does have a kind of string cheese effect where you can pull the edges off. I like, guess. I like mean, you, you have to come up with some kind of a gimmick. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to get people to buy it, you're fake, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, can I ask you a question? When you, when you turned on uh, Twizzlers, was it when the commercials from our youth were just floating lips? Was that creepy enough for you to not want that anymore? Because <laughs> that was enough for me. <laughs> like, I don't want that. That sounds gross. Um, I want but, your lip candy. <laughs> but if you, if you only had Twizzlers, would you eat them? Like, that's the only, oh, yeah. I like, mean, it's, 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 still, have, it's, it's still sugar. Yeah, if you have a candy option in front of you, it's only Twizzlers. Sure. You're going to eat it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. What, what, what about you? What, I mean, Twizzlers, yeah, I, yeah I, I would only have like one or two. Like, I could throw down like half a tub of Red Vines. Twizzlers, I'd have like one or two and be like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I could. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I'm good with either. Um, so, the uh, the thing that I like about Twizzlers is they're... It's not exactly the same as a red vine flavor. It's more like a strawberry type flavor, which I like. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have a bunch of other flavors. Now, what about this? Let me throw this at you. Let put this thought technology in your brain noggin. Okay. The uh, the licorice rope. Where do you stand on that? The red licorice, red vine well, I haven't, rope. I haven't I haven't been to a baseball game in I don't know how long. Can you even buy them outside of any type of like baseball game? That is a great question. Are you I, talking about the, the three foot long? Yeah, yeah, you can only get them at like a minor league baseball game, I think. Yeah. Or, <laughs> uh, yeah, but where do you, when you have had them, describe how was your experience? Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, that's just a weird d delivery method of, of your, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't had them since I was like probably 15 or so yeah well all right i like them uh <laughs> the problem is if you get a stale one like you're gonna break your jaw it's like a rope yeah. it's like a rope jawbreaker yeah it's just like one long stiff piece of licorice Plastic. at that point yeah yeah 
It just reminds you of all the processing that went into this to make this candy. Like none of this is real food. I think it's you, it's true. It's you, all I mean, it's all fake. I will say this: like red vines, you know, came out first. That's all. I'm, that's uh, at the very least, I'll say that. Are we sure about so, that? Yeah, because I looked it up. Because okay. I had to be sure before I said it on there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay 19, 1920 versus 19 uh and they, they started using their red vines name in 1952 but twizzlers didn't appear in, until 1929 so red, red vines were out nine years before 1920 you're telling um, me twizzlers has been around since 1929 yeah and then they got they got bought by hershey in like 1977 or something like that so twizzlers they sold out was operating by itself for for 50 years <laughs> for 40 years <laughs> Yeah, just riding the coattails of of the superior red vine. I wow. think, you know. Yeah. Wow. I think we can all agree though, across America, Necco wafers are disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. The Maxon clan, my my wife's side of the family would would that's a hard disagree. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, they're so gross. Welcome to Candy Talk. I'm I'm happy to entertain candy talk because this is important <laughs> stuff to leslie but like okay so black licorice tastes like medicine right i get it uh -huh. i like it sure mike and ike's oh my gosh not not mike and ike's good and plenty i love them i love good and plenty oh good and plenty are great because they have that nice like sugary crusty shell on yeah, them even more like fantastic <laughs> oh <laughs> Like a, I, I, I you're eating the wrong. You chew your ibuprofen. <laughs> like, am I doing that wrong? I think you're doing that wrong. <laughs> oh, weird. Um, but yeah. So the Necco wafer tastes like like Pepto Bismol. Well, they they get the chocolate ones. Ugh. So no. then it tastes like chalky chalky chocolate. No. Why would you do oh, yeah. that? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. How do you feel about Charleston chew? It's so chewy. It's okay. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. What about Big Hunk? Yeah, big, I like Big Hunk. That's a weird one because if you eat it really slow, it's chewy. But if you eat it too fast, it'll break your tooth. Right? Yeah, it, you're gonna have to like let it just hang out in your in yeah. your in your jaw. Yeah, you area. could break it on the table, which is pretty awesome, and then it's smaller smaller pieces. Yeah. All right. What about this? Uh huh. Chico stick. Yeah, I'm for it. Those are because so that's good. like yeah because Chico stick is is the inside of a butterfinger. Right. Yeah. So if you're like, I want a butterfinger, but no chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got you covered. I just want the butter. What if you want a butterfinger but no butter? Mm -hmm. That's something else altogether. All don't my why kids, would you ask that? Okay, going back to the red vines situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's in the middle. My kids love nerds ropes. Oh no, I I can't get on board with that. Yeah, I I would have to ask them to move out of my house if that was my situation. <laughs> Crunchy chewy. No, no thanks. Do they make nerds pop rocks? I don't think so. I think those are two separate things. Well, uh, who do we write think that to one, about that? Because that one kid tried in the 80s and his head exploded when he drank a can of Mountain Dew. Yeah, Mountain Dew and pop rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did Coke, see a Coke, myth, Coke and pop, rock, pop rocks. But, uh, yeah. Mythbusters about that, where they tried to see if they could, if it was true that if you ate Pepsi, is what they used, and pop rocks, your stomach would explode. And they got a pig stomach and filled did, it up. It so the did, pig didn't the pig didn't make it. Well, the pig didn't make it, but the stomach did not explode. Okay. So yeah, anyway. So um Lis oh, listener, if you if you haven't <laughs> like, you know, just stop this by now, what uh where do you land on the actual, you know, licorice debate? Uh red vines versus twizzlers. And uh, you know, just I mean, any other general thoughts on candy as well that we could talk about later. I love candy because I think we like talking about candy and sugared things like cereal. I went uh, in the time between <laughs> when we recorded this, Jeremy, uh -huh. when we started and when we're now recording, I went to Houston uh, and I found wow. a uh, yeah, it was a long <laughs> trip, but very fast. Um, I went to we both nights that we were there, we were looking for ice cream. And so Dairy Queen closed. Wendy's already cleaned their ice cream machine. 
So we went to Shamrock Shake uh, McDonald's town, which is a Shamrock Shake is great if you want a milkshake and to feel like you're brushing your teeth at the same time. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> you get a two for there. The second night we found a this place. For, a two for ache. <laughs> yes, uh, a two for yeah. ache. I get it. Hey. Um, the second night we found this place uh, where they make all their own ice cream. That's and, cool. And it was really good. And the guy told us, I'm an ice cream chef. And I was that's a, that's a thing. I was so delighted by by his, his just declaring that. Now, did he ha- wear like a white hat, like one of those chef's hats? No, no, no. It, it Crocs? Just, no, none of that. He's not Mario Batali. Um, he uh, yeah, he just him and his wife run this place. He's an ice cream chef. And uh, I the ice cream was really good. So like. I, I just loved it. But anytime I think about a chef, I think these are people who generally apply heat to things. Well, you do have to heat up the 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 milk mixture, don't you? Before you I do. I don't the, know. That's why there's a chef. Can you just be really good at a food thing and call yourself a chef? I don't like, know. Could I be a French toast chef? I don't know. Huh. Well, remember that episode of The Office? Hey, Casey, we're talking about The Office again. Uh, remember <laughs> that episode of The Office where Andy is dating uh turns out a high school student oh yeah and they go to the oh, yeah. school she's, she's frozen yogurt chef <laughs> she's a frozen yogurt chef <laughs> <laughs> the whole time this guy's talking to me about his passion about ice cream that's the only thing i could think about <laughs> no she's a frozen yogurt chef i was like uh-huh 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 <laughs> oh poor guy but it was really good all right, all right. If so, I go back so to before Houston next year, I'm going back to that place. It was really good. So, so before we actually get back on track, what 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 flavor did you did they have any like cool chef flavors like like salt and straw? Was it like you no. know stra- strawberry basil? Well, they or did anything have, like that. They, I mean, they made their own ice cream. I don't know if I told you that, but um, they had like uh, different combinations that they were working with. Nothing weird. Like the uh, the other day, I had not the other day <laughs> in the summer, I had a peach gorgonzola Mm -hmm. ice cream at salt and and straw uh just a sample because i couldn't commit to gorgonzola cone uh so (laughs) too much dairy in one spot (laughs) yeah so i i they didn't have anything off the wall like salt and straw but they did have a i went with a um like a cookies and cream uh it was cookies and cream and uh chocolate chip cookie dough like mixed up it was so good. So good. So the cookies and then pre-cookies. Yeah. Cookies and more cookies. And it was great. It was very good. That was the, nice. uh, the only like unique to Houston thing that we were able to do. Like <laughs> everything else was chains. Um, you didn't go, go to space camp or anything? No. 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 Dude, have we gotten enough. out of the, the cold open yet? We did. Okay. I'm just making sure. But just barely. Just barely. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll hurry it up. <laughs> All right, so they're trying to throw this thing and uh, this party, and Ben is very nervous because his parents hate each other. R- Tom is also getting ready to, because last episode, he uh, came up with the idea of Rent-A-Swag, and so he is t- going to talk to Ron about investing in his company. Uh, and, and so he's asking April and uh, Andy and uh, Jerry to sit in on a pitch meeting, and it's all hype, all craziness, everything uh, that would uh definitely drive ron swanson crazy andy thinks it's the greatest thing he's ever seen uh and april says it's terrible uh, because you don't want to talk about any of your failed businesses got to get rid of the light show and don't use any weird made-up words that ron doesn't understand (laughs) know your Uh, audience man yeah yeah and so and tom's like what am i going to do i'm going to start uh tomorrow i don't have time to start from scratch and april just straight up tells him the truth if you do any of this, he's not going to invest in your, your stuff. So <laughs> your funeral. Um, and uh, yeah, so then cuts back to the party. They're going over, unless he's going over the plan with Ben. Um, and uh, and Ben is like, how about we leave again uh, while my parents slowly strangle each other in the living room? <laughs> uh, and so uh, Leslie's got it all covered, though. She wants to hand her a wine and her mom, her mom will go over and talk to Ben's mom and they'll just start chatting and they'll be great. And then his dad will come. Um, and Ben points out he's terrifying, which is true. Uh, so well cast because it's the guy who plays Mike from 
Breaking Bad. And uh, he was terrifying in Breaking Bad, too. Um, and so uh, and so when Stephen comes up, then uh, Leslie is going to reveal the unity quilt, the Nope Wyatt unity quilt with all the squares representing different elements of their family, bringing things together and unifying in, a, in coziness. Uh, and uh, Leslie points out that out of respect for Ben, she didn't include any images of the other man in the world who's as sexy as Ben, Joe Biden. Uh, and then <laughs> Ben points out that she did right there <laughs> on the quilt. <laughs> and looks like, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so Leslie thinks this is going to bring peace and unite the families. Uh, and Ben is like, it's beautiful, but it won't. Um, and so, so then Les Ann gives a toast talking about her, how her life has been a bit of a, her romantic life has been a mixed bag. Um, but, um, you know, she wants to celebrate Leslie and Ben. They deserve the best and they found each other. Uh, and then they all start saying like, Ben, don't you dare hurt her. And then it goes around the room with, uh, Ron, Andy, Jerry, all saying, you better not hurt her. And Don, Donna saying, uh, you best watch yourself. Um, and so everybody is, you know, threatening Ben into honoring Leslie and respecting her, which is the best way to start a relationship. And, uh, Chris is uh, just overwhelmed by emotion. And I says he's crying. He says, that's the best, most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And then he puts his head on, on, on Donna's bosom, essentially. <laughs> and uh, Donna's like, there, there, you got it. And she looks at the camera knowingly, like, this is all right. <laughs> so so the, the, the party's getting off to an interesting start with Chris crying already, uh, which is going to come up later uh and then uh cuts to party and ben is talking uh about how uh in a wrestling match kirk would win but overall uh jean-luc picard is a better captain uh which i agree with ben on this one jean-luc picard is a great captain uh and i don't i don't care who knows it uh and so um leslie's mom shows up and it th this liberates leslie from this conversation about jean-luc picard and she's happy about it or, um, yeah. And then, uh, Julia shows up and Ben is so excited to see his mom and it's really nice for Leslie and Julia to meet. Um, and Ben, uh, reminds her that there's no fighting and, uh, and Julia's response is classic, classic passive aggressiveness. I'll be civil as long as he is. Uh, and this is, this is the problem with the world today. People just choose to be civil. That's it. Thank you for yeah. coming to my TED Talk. Yeah, and have some pancakes. Yeah, be civil. Have some pancakes. You don't have to, you don't have to like people, but you don't have to be a jerk. You get to choose whether or not you're going to be a jerk. So, Julia, choose now. On this episode that was recorded many years ago. Um... So, uh, so then we see, uh, Anne is welcoming people to the party and she sees Chris outside crying by himself. Um, and, uh, he points out that, you know, he's been very raw from his therapy. And so he's happy and sad at the same time. It's the perfect storm of emotions. Um, and, uh, and so he's got this box of tissues out there and he's crying <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> so he says, I'm, out, I'm hiding out here. So I don't ruin this party for my two amazing best friends who I love so much. He reaches into the tissue box. There's nothing that left. <laughs> There's no more tissue. Everything ends. <laughs> oh, which is so wonderful. Like I, there's so many, so many times when you're work, like hanging out with like your own children where they have not learned how to regulate their emotions when they're young, you know, where it's just like, I don't even know how to handle what's happening right now. Right. And, and Chris is having that kind of an emotional response. He's like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but this is not okay. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's like in those moments, like, I don't know how to handle you. I don't know what to do um, with a child this way, other than to say, like, why don't you go eat a snack, right? Um, <laughs> just eat your emotions. It's fine. Well, sometimes people are just, are, are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, right? Halt. Right. And, you know, sometimes the easiest one is like, did you eat something? And they're, they're going to try that with Chris later. Like, you got to eat something, man. Um, and so they, uh, those kinds have of things a, have a big honk 
yeah, this will keep you busy for three hours. Oh, also, <laughs> how do you feel about now and later's? They're they're like a harder uh, starburst, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but the, but I like the flavor of them. I just okay. can't like I I don't know if I should chew them or just yeah. It's it's a weird yeah. Yeah. They're good. They're fine. They're fine. I like them. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot to think about. It is. Put me on the spot there. Yeah. Sorry. Um. That might happen again. Um. I don't know. I'm for it. All okay. right. I'll just pepper you with what? What do you think about pepper candy? Hmm. <laughs> pepper candy. Is that a thing? No. Well, actually, okay. yes, because the <laughs> the Jelly Bellies have a pepper, <laughs> yes, a black pepper candy. That's true. Uh, we t- I think we talked about this last time though about je- like jelly beans. Last time or times ago, we talked about it. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time is a flat circle, so who knows when we talked about it? That's we true. will talk about it uh, again. There will be yeah. more. Um, and so as uh, the uh, goes back into the house and. Um, Leslie is talking with, uh, Marlene and, uh, there, she's just, um, so pr- proud of Marlene and Julia is there too. And talking about how much, how adorable Ben is and everything's going so great. Moms are getting along together. It's so good. It's awesome. And then Ben says, ah, pack it up. It's over. We're screwed. Uh, and look over and you see his dad's coming in and he brought his girlfriend. Um, and, uh, they were not supposed to. They had worked, talked to him, I guess, about him not bringing his girlfriend. Uh, Julia says he brought his little plaything because his girlfriend is much, 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 much younger than he is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so her name is Ulani. Um, and uh, Steve is uh, <laughs> Ben says, I thought you weren't coming, Ulani. And Steve, Ben's dad, says, Ulani is my girlfriend. She's important to me and I need her here. <laughs> uh, and so Ilan, Ulani is upset because um, she looks at Steve like well, they didn't know I was coming. Um, and uh, this, so this kicks off some really fun times. Julia says, we didn't know it was spring break. Um, and uh, <laughs> so it's going great. Leslie tries to solve it with candy and says, hey, Red Vines, anyone? To which Steve replies, we're a Twizzlers family um so you have a pretty good jonathan banks impression thank you i think he is uh he is a great a great stage and screen presence so um i've seen him in two things now fun fact fun fact and also and also i know yes community he was oh he yeah, was the, yeah 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 he was the replacement old man <laughs> that's right <laughs> so yeah okay uh, fun fact <laughs> fun fact ulani uh, the the actor who is Ulani auditioned for the role of April. That's a fun fact. I could I could see that. I could totally I mean, I, see it. Not I could see her as April. Not that she would audition. I don't know her personally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no one thought you know you knew Kulop <laughs> personally. So you don't know. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't no. know. <laughs> I know you don't know her. Easter's uh, around the corner. What do you think about Peeps? Um, I'm not really a fan of Peeps. I, I told my mother-in-law years ago that I enjoyed Peeps. Or actually, I think it was an Easter. There were Peeps lying around. No one was eating them. And so I was eating them. And I think she just inferred that I really liked Peeps. And I have gotten every single kind of different Peep that they come out with since then. Christmas time, Easter time. Valentine, it just doesn't. If there's a peep, she buys me peeps. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm man. So sick of peeps, but she's so sweet. I can't not. I can't tell her. You know, like it's just really nice. Plus, plus, you can joust them in the microwave. Have you ever have you ever seen that? No. You 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 take two of the the uh, the peeps like the traditional ones that are the chick mm-hmm. f- shape, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and you stick toothpicks in the front of them so they're mm-hmm. pointing at each other. Yeah. And, and then put a put a paper towel down first, and then you could put them on the microwave for like I don't know a minute, and then as they puff up, they the toothpick will get closer and closer to the other one, and then one will poke the other one and will deflate. Oh, yeah, it's well, pretty that's great. Kind of cool. Yeah, check that out. Anyway, I I'll try to remember to do that by yeah. trying to remember to buy peeps. <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah, I do peeps. like though at Easter time is the uh, peanut butter Reese's peanut butter eggs. Like instead of the peanut butter cups, and I have a theory that because they're seasonal, they're fresher. The peanut butter tastes more peanut buttery. 
Okay. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> like, but also like the Christmas tree ones, I, they taste better. I think it's just the shape. You think shape makes an effect has a, a an effect on flavor? Yeah, you've ever had a like when you eat a sandwich and you cut it like diagonally. Uh huh. It, t- it tastes better. That's actually not a thing. And you get more uh, the geometry of it when you cut it diagonally. You get more sandwich. Mm. More sandwich of the same amount of geography or geometry that you had in the first place. Mm-hmm. And it tastes better. Interesting how you would have more of something from the same amount of something. What do you think about high chews? Hate them. Why? They taste like birthday candles. I hate them. Have you eaten birthday candles? Uh, yeah. Well, I've had birthday candles in my mouth when I take the frosting off the birthday candle. <laughs> when I take it out of the cake, I'm not a monster. And it's that same, like, it tastes like after the frosting is gone from the candle, what's left? Candle. I choose <laughs> tastes like candle. Just fruity candles. I hate them. Okay. But you like them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. Also, what I don't like about high chews is how loud my wife eats them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, they don't put that, that's not on the bag. That's not something you can warn people about. <laughs> Maybe they should. They didn't put <laughs> cancer warnings on cigarettes for a long time, but now they do. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like candles, and also Kathy's your spouse may eat them. <laughs> Kathy eats them very loudly, and I, you know, she doesn't mean to. It's like you just can't not. So, anyway, uh, so uh, they're a Twizzlers family. This is a problem. Uh, Leslie is like, this is not going well, and Ben is like, hey, I guess what? I have a plan. I got a cab. Let's go. I paid the hundred, <laughs> the driver, hundred bucks, so we can go wherever we want. Maybe. Let's just leave right now and leave this party. Um, and uh, and let's like, no, we can make this work. Let's figure out what they can talk about. And Ben, uh, because he knows his family, is, uh, well, they're white people from Minnesota. So hockey, fishing, skiing, sailing, and after a few drinks, put on a Prince album. Don't mention the Green Bay Packers or the state of Iowa. <laughs> so I love that because um, the people I know from Minnesota also would would uh, talk about any of those things. I saw someone from Minnesota this week uh, and they were these things came up. Uh, and also the Packers were because <laughs> well, they like Aaron Rodgers secured a deal. Uh, and so he was pretty upset about that. <laughs> so because he hates Aaron Rodgers. Just because he's a Packer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a lot of reasons, but the the Packers thing was his reason. So, um, yeah. So uh, things are, are not going super well. Um, and Leslie acknowledges this for the first time in her life, I think, where. uh she points out that everything is terrible, um, but she believes that her unity quilt will help everything get much better. Um, and so she's still holding on to that. Um, and uh, so, but here's the problem. Chris is emotional and Andy is trying to figure out why. Uh, and so uh, Anne asks Andy and April to like take care of him. And so she's like, Chris is crying. Uh why is he crying? He's emotional. <laughs> Why is he Chris emotional? Because he's in therapy and right now, and he's dredging up a lot of stuff for him. Wait, like what kind of stuff? <laughs> so, um, and uh, he's like, well, he's not. Everybody's getting married. He's not dating anyone. And then Andy's like, Why isn't he dating anyone? <laughs> so, uh, the they go in to. Tr- they're going to go try to help him in uh, in a minute. Um, Tom shows up at the party and starts talking with Ron. Uh, and Ron's like, Hey, I haven't seen you here. He's like, I've been working on my presentation. Uh, and you know, Tom is pretty excited about that. Or Ron is excited about that. He's like, he appreciates a good work ethic. He's looking for someone to invest, uh, with. And, uh, uh, then it goes to a, a talking head and I love this talking head. Uh, cause he's, uh, says ever since I got my first job at the age of nine, I put all my money into gold, which is currently at an all time high. So I have a certain amount of money. <laughs> I've said too much. <laughs> so i was uh i had two dollar bills in my wallet this week <laughs> not to brag two 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 single dollar bills <laughs> two single dollar bills wow. and uh i went to the airport or thing i parked my car and you know they'd give you the the, the trolley or the the bus to take you take you to the airport and so i, I was gonna tip the person but i only had two dollar bills and uh <laughs> and i looked at my wallet and i was like i have a certain amount of money <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I went, 
I went and saw a movie the other day and I went to go buy something at the concession and I only had cash and I tried to buy it with cash and they wouldn't, they wouldn't take it. Really? They go, we, we don't accept cash here. What? And, and I, and I, and it just, I, I, I was dumbfounded. I couldn't not now it's COVID it's still COVID times. I think that's, that's part of it. That's a, that's actually, I think that's the reason, but it was still just in that moment. I was like, what, what happened? I don't understand. I have, this is the, this is money. You have it. And I have my thing. Like, why can't we, you just give me the thing that I want and I'll give you the money that I have. Yeah. Why is this? I don't understand. Wow. It was weird. It was weird. I, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. That's so it's going to be happening just, more and more. I stole that cup and ran away. Oh, wow. That's, that's not, that's not true at all. <laughs> uh, all right. Huh? Well, yeah. So Ron is looking to invest. So he's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so maybe talk to him about any places that might accept gold. Um, and so I'll borrow a certain amount from him. Yeah. And uh, so Ron's like, I'm looking forward to it. And Tom, you know, he's been told he's got to redo everything. So he's like, is there any chance we could reschedule? And Ron's like, no, I like to keep my appointments. I like others to do the same. And so Tom's like, all right, we're going to do that. Um, and, uh, and so, but he points out that it's going to, uh, he's going to be very impressed with our presentation. And Ron's like, our presentation? Uh, and then this is when John Ralphio comes up and starts to make Ron's shoulder a turntable. <laughs> Ricka, 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 Ricka Swanson. Uh, and uh, John, and he's like, John Ralphio, that's a me. <laughs> um, and so he's like, I didn't know you were part of this. And so this is going to be a bit of a problem. Um, and uh, you could see Ron's annoyance growing um, in this whole conversation more and more. Uh, and uh, it, you know, it basically comes to uh, John Ralphio trying to take some of Ron's shrimp and he just pokes his hand with a skewer uh, and, uh, and he's like, ah, OK. Um, and uh, so Ron is communicating clearly to Tom. John Ralphio is not my person. Like, I do not like him. So <laughs> um, so then it cuts to Ulani and Steve and Leslie talking and Ulani's like, let's just drive back. I feel weird. Uh, so. And Steve and Leslie is like, all right, let me try to change the conversation. You like sailing, right? And Steve points out, I did, but Julia sold the boat in the divorce, uh, and she's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Leslie tries to spin it to say, well, now you don't have to deal with that upkeep, right? Um, and uh, it does not go well. Uh, and so I have a surprise in the other room. So let's go. And so they go over to look at the surprise. And what is it? It's the quilt. And it, Leslie points out in a talking head or to Ben directly, that there were three separate occasions she's used a quilt to mend fences. Uh, in ninth grade, a quilt and an argument between her two best friends. A quilt studied the Donnie and Jerry parking lot feud of 2006. And the third one is right bleeping now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and Ben is like, it's not going to work at all. Um, and uh, so then it cuts to Andy and April going to talk to Chris and they have champion with them. Um, and uh, Andy um says hey champion wants to see you and chris is like petting champion and crying and champion is licking the tears off of chris's face uh and he's like you are such a brave good dog with so much spirit you've overcome so much you are the most wonderful dog in the whole world and i am so happy for you and he's crying and it's just a wonderful uh wonderful little moment i love how disgusted andy is at this though like as he's licking his face like, I don't know what he's more disgusted at, the fact that Champion's looking at his face or how, like, sad Chris is in this moment or just all of it. Yeah, I don't know if he knows how to handle the range of emotion because he is a golden retriever, right? And it's true. Ma Maggie, I think, is attuned. My golden retriever uh, is attuned to, like, when somebody's not feeling great. But she doesn't know what to do about it. <laughs> like She's like, I see you're not feeling well. Let me just be in your face. <laughs> This is helping, right? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And then, but if you like, no, this isn't good. She's like, what? <laughs> She's personally offended. When you're offended. Like, I need a little space from you right now. It's like, how? <laughs> I'm going to go throw up on your rug. <laughs> so, which, I mean, her and my kids both. Um, so you Throw up on your rug? No. Um, Leslie takes the whole group over to the, and reveals the Nope Wyatt Unity Quilt. And Marlene is like, this is awesome. Uh, and Ulani just right off the bat, where's my square? 
To which Leslie responds, you're not technically... Technically what? Uh, not technically an adult is Julia's response. Uh, <laughs> and um, and Steve is so great. So great. This is a very thoughtless omission, Leslie. As far as I'm concerned, if there is no Ulani square, this is not a legitimate unity quilt. <laughs> legitimate. That, just the, that word right there. Perfect. <laughs> like, like he's seen these before. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is not a legitimate unity quilt. <laughs> Does not meet all the requirements. Uh, and so <laughs> Leslie's like, this quilt is going under protest. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie tries to fix it by writing Ulani on the waffles quilt. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's your square now. And uh, and so Leslie's like, what does Ulani mean? And she says, with the straightest of dour faces, cheerful, cheerful. <laughs> and the whole time, the whole time, Julia's like just shaking her head like, no, no. What are you doing? Stop. Yeah, uh, it is so, so great. That moment. This is not a legitimate unity quilt. <laughs> uh, and Julia is like, I don't want her name on my quilt. And Leslie, her response is, it's not yours. It's everyone's quilt. It's a unity quilt. Um, and. Uh, Ulani just is like, I think it mean it's mean that you didn't do a square for me. And Steve again, <laughs> it's a disaster, is what it is. <laughs> and then Leslie's like, see, Ben, they're agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. Uh, so then cut back over to uh Tom's house, working with John Ralphio um about the uh on the pitch. And um he's like, We gotta drunk everything except the mannequins. Because Ron has to see the outfits, which is good. That's the business. Good, good thinking, Tom. Uh, and so Ron is like, why are we going? John Ralph is like, why are we even going to Ron? He should be coming to us. We created Entertainment 720. And Tom reminds him that was a huge failure. Yeah, <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, and there's no bank that's going to give him a loan. And so they're kind of like, this is the only way to get their startup money. And John Ralph feels like, I get it. Let's go clubbing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's he's just a really good friend um, in this situation. and. He's like, Tom's like, no, I got to work. And Tom's and John Ralph is like, I'll be here for you no matter what. But right now I cannot be there for you because I have to go. <laughs> so, um, and John so, Ralphio in a nutshell. Yeah. And so John Ralphio is like wanting to go. And Tom's response is, I hate to say this, but sometimes you got to work a little so you can ball a lot. And John Ralph's response is, that's beautiful. That's changed me. I'll give you 10 minutes. <laughs> so it, it is a little. It absolutely is. So Anne comes in uh, to see Chris in the room as he's crying and she brings food. Remember, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, brings food. Uh, and uh, he's eating some shrimp. He's like, wow, that's amazing. And he's like, great, that's awesome. And then he tries another one. He's like, this one's not as good. <laughs> he starts crying. Um, and so they start talking about uh, Andy. He's like, I'm just going to talk about things that make people happy. And so they go back and forth and uh, and start talking about things that are happy. And then April starts talking about things that are not happy. So Chris, or you're not, I, mean, I read the name Chris, but you're Jeremy, Jeremy. Yeah, that's, that's I me. Think, I think we should go back and forth on this. <clears throat> I like it. All right. Um, and so who, do you want, we can skip Chris's lines here in this mm -hmm. little bit mm -hmm. and we'll just do April and Andy's. Who do you want to be? I'll be April. Okay. All right, Chris, <clears throat> here's the plan. I'm just going to list off happy things until you're cheered up. Pizza, the beach, Rock and roll music. And all those terrible things that bring you back down. Smallpox, botch surgery, snails crawling out of your mouth. And Andon is like, all right, you guys keep doing this. And he says, laughter. Snails crawling out of your mouth. The beach. Snails crawling out of your mouth. Cute cats. Snails crawling out of your butt. Dave Matthews Band. Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> I love that <laughs> because for some Dave Matthews band is so great and they love it. And they, like people talk about Dave, I'm going to go see Dave. And it's like, who's Dave? Oh, at the gorge. I'm going to go see him from a mile away. Uh, mm -hmm. But you call him Dave still. Uh, and I get it for other people. Um, you know, Dave Matthews band is everything that's wrong with the, uh, with pop music that came out of the uh, early nineties and is still happening. I think I think a lot of the blowback is the people who like Dave Matthews. They're they can be pretty intense about their love of Dave Matthews. That they're mm -hmm. like, I don't want to listen to the thing that makes you be like the way you are. Yeah. So now I I enjoy Dave Matthews band. As as do I. 
Um, and I've never seen Dave Matthews in concert, but you have. I, I have. So I have. When, when you went to the to see Dave, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which I think I've shared this before, but Dave is, I think, one of the most trusting names. I've never met a Dave that I don't trust. Um, Dave Grohl. I've, I haven't met him either. Dave Matthews, haven't met him either. Uh, but my friend Dave, uh, awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I, I've met him. Yeah. Um, but when you were there, were you overwhelmed with the fandom of, of Dave? It's, it's, uh, it's intense. I mean, people, it's kind of a mix of like a frat party with a, what I imagine a Grateful Dead concert to be like. It's, it's like the kids who grew up with Grateful Dead, you know, parents then they go to the the Dave Matthews concert because it's kind of like jam band kind of esque. Yeah, yeah. But then you also have like the frat bro type, you know, people who go to, you know, get down. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a good mix though. A lot of a lot of you know families, kids, old people. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff um, <laughs> at Dave Dave shows. Yeah, I went to a concert. I, mean, <laughs> I saw a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't get out of control or anything. But you know, um, yeah. It's pretty, it could be pretty chill. Cool. There you go. <laughs> Good. Dave Matthews on an on tour now. It could be pretty cool. Pretty could chill. Be pretty, pretty chill. Pretty Jeremy. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on the poster. Seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of stuff. Take your water though. It's really expensive when you go to concerts, especially the outdoor ones. Yeah. You can take in your own water. It's okay. All right. There you go. Well, technically, any water you drank before the concert, you br- you're also bringing in, and it's you can true. leave it there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, cut back to the party, leaving the Dave Matthews Band at the Gorge, and we're coming back to the party. Um, and Ben is talking to his dad, and it's like, "Why can't you be cool? Like, for thirty seconds, let's see, worked really hard on this." And and this Steve's is some like, Dave Matthews. Yeah, it'll be chill. Uh, it'll be chill. And uh, and Steve's like, I can, but your mother can't. And he points over, like, see, she's ruining your quilt, just like she ruined our marriage <laughs> with, uh, an, with scissors. And uh, Julia is cutting out the Ulani quilt. Uh, and Julia's response is, "It had to be done, Ben." <laughs> and it, it absolutely, absolutely did, did not. not. <laughs> and Marlene tries to help, and she comes over, like, "Hey, here's champagne." Um, and Les is like, "Why don't we forget the quilt and just raise a glass?" And they hand out a champagne toasts for everybody. And Ulani says, I, I'm, I'm good. I can't. And Julia's like, can you even, are you even old enough to drink? And she's like, yes, but I can't because I'm pregnant. Dun, uh, dun, dun. So Ben is going to be a brother. Uh, and Steve is like, they mean to steal your spotlight, but uh, cat's out of the bag. Still firing bullets, son, oh. <laughs> which is awful. <laughs> All awful. Um, and, uh, and so it's not going well. And so this is uh, so, so bad. So then Leslie is talking to her mom. Is like, was this like, how did you, you and, and, and dad fought? And like, would you ever fight like that? And Marlene gives way too much information. Like, yeah, we fought, but occasionally I won, he won. Uh, but often we just ended up uh, sleeping together, having sex. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, that's too much. Um, and uh, Marlene's like, I just missed that, man. <laughs> so, um, but uh, Tom, it goes back to Tom's apartment and uh, he's trying to, get John Ralphio to focus, but John Ralphio is doing Ill- inappropriate searches uh, on uh, Tom's computer, he finds out that his safe search is on. And, uh, and so he's upset. He's like, look, I got to go. I'm, I'm out of here. And Tom uh, fires him. And, uh, and he's going to just let his friend go and do his own, his own thing. Uh, and he's going to stay focused on his party. Uh, so then we uh, cut back and we see Leslie is out in the cab and uh, Ben comes out and, uh, and he's like, what are you doing? And he's, she said, I grabbed all the brownies for, and four bottles of wine. We're going to Australia. Uh, and uh, Les, Ben is like, no, nah, we're going to I would we're not going to run away. We're going to fix this. We're going to you made an awesome quilt and my parents are insane, but they need to be at our wedding. Um, so it's time to come up with a new plan. And so phase one of the plan is that they would uh, just make out in the cab for 15 minutes and the cab driver's like, cool. At the party, Ron is still eating shrimp uh, and uh, John Ralphio shows up and uh, it's set, like comes up to, uh, to Ron and he just yells out, swan song. Uh, and uh, again, John, he pokes him with the, the, prod, the, the prong, the, not the prong, what is that thing? Skewer. Skewer, yeah. 
Thank you. Um, and Ron's like, I thought you were working on the presentation. And John's like, I decided it best if I took my talents elsewhere. Uh, do you know what I mean? Back to that party. <laughs> and he's like, and Ron's like, oh, you abandoned your friends. Like, oh no, he fired me straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then yeah, John Ralphio decides to pitch Ron an idea, condoms with pictures on them. <laughs> Pass. Good. Good. Smart. Smart. <laughs> you made and the right decision. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, cut to Ann and Chris at the party. Um, and, and, uh, and says, you know, it seems like the storm has passed and Chris like it has, cause he's doing pushups on the floor. Um, and, uh, you know, he's like, it's, I, I, I can't believe I spent the entire night being happy, sad on the, uh, you know, when the night that means so much to my friends. Um, and it's like, you're going through a lot and you got to purge this stuff out. Um, and April, her response is the lesbian nurse is right, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> you keep it all bottled up. And Chris, so Chris is like, all right, yeah, you're right. Um, I need to get these tumbling out. That means I can get a clean, sh- clean start. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then Anne's response, well, that for that, you're going to have to visit the bathroom first, <laughs> right? <laughs> Trying to make a poop joke about <laughs> getting all the, <laughs> getting a clean start. Um, so, um, yeah, so. The uh, she, uh, I'm I'm just scrolling here, um, because I realize how long this episode already is. <laughs> uh, so there's so much more though. I know there's so much going on in this episode, and uh, so the um, <clears throat> Ben and Leslie just tell them like you've got to come to the wedding. You have to agree to not talk to each other. Um, you have to just be here not like you just ignore each other altogether but you have to come to the wedding and they can they make the deal um and then they um uh, make an apology um you know julia says she's sorry ulani says sorry whatever <laughs> uh <laughs> so it's going great um and uh so but leslie's like look ben's parents are in a talking head ben's parents are insane but he's amazing and that's all that matters um and so uh Again, the unity quilt worked. So she's three for three on unity quilts. And she's talking outside with the cab. And the, she's like, we only have 30. Ben comes out of the window. He's like, we only have 30, 30 bucks left. So they drive off with the cab to make out in the back of the cab. Um, so then uh, the next day, Tom comes to meet with Ron. And uh, he's, he's like, you know what? I stayed up all night on this thing. I want to tell you about rent a swag And Ron is impressed with this he's like you don't even need to say anything i'm in um and he says i like doing business with serious people and when you removed yourself from the company of that moron you showed me you're a serious person you have your money um and then john ralphio shows up and this is all over the credit scene and he's like giving the overview of the party (laughs) (laughs) and uh, he's like clubs girls dancing naked mom Argument, police, <laughs> fleeing the scene, hiding in a dumpster, coming here, crossing on, crashing on your couch for a week because technically I'm homeless. I'm going to hit the couch. You know where I'd be? And he just <laughs> collapses on the couch. And that is the end of this <laughs> episode. It was a long one. There's a lot you happening did. in this one. Yeah. A lot of candy. A <laughs> lot of, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Yeah. But it's over now, friends. <laughs> So, listener. Well, according according to oh, go, listener, what I was going to say. You're welcome. So, oh, yeah. according to what I, I was going to say, according to blog.galvanize.com, dot um, which I, I go to for all my my candy lists, need uh, that the best selling candy in the United States is it, what would you what would you think is the best selling candy as of 2020? The best selling candy in the United States is it? What was the website? Uh, it was blog.galvanize.com. Blog forward slash can, candy dot, crush figuring out favorite sweets with data blog.galvanized.com mm-hmm. i'm sorry mm-hmm. i'm writing this down slash <laughs> why <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> um the uh i would say m&ms that's correct nice and reese's peanut butter cups excellent but down at number seven twizzlers, twizzlers. yeah i didn't go to the website i just am guessing like i could tell by your tone that yeah, you were going to be disappointed by what you were going to say. I, I am. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Uh, number one most hated Halloween candy in the United States as of 2020. Number one most hated? Mm-hmm. Uh, in, those, in the United States. The, the, carnival, the circus peanuts. Oh, very cool. That's number three. Is it really? Number three. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Number, number one. one most hated. 
Uh, I'm still C- peeps. Candy corn. Really? Yeah, candy corn is disgusting. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan, but I see it everywhere. And number number six, you'd be happy about Necco wafers. Oh yeah, they're gross. Are people giving those at, out at Halloween? Yeah, because they hate children. It's a it's a good way to like get a curse. <laughs> this oh, one, so this gross. one, this one cracked me up. Number four, just coming in underneath the circus peanuts, wax Coke bottles. Oh yeah, those are disgusting. <laughs> those are so bad. Those are like the stupidest candies because you bite the top off. When you bite the top off, it like pinches it back closed, and then yeah, the and then s- you have Coke to like syrup suck out. The, oh. <laughs> so, and then you just got this wax garbage. And then you got that one friend who like puts the whole thing in his mouth and just chews it, and it's like, ah, see, it's not that bad. Was that you? Uh yeah. <laughs> I eat wax. <laughs> Hand me some of those high chews. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, I know we uh, we went on quite a journey together with this episode. Um, you probably downloaded last week and you're like, are they okay? Is Jeremy lost in the wilderness? <laughs> I um, lost you. <laughs> so he wasn't. We found him. Spoiler alert. We did this whole episode now. Jason um, just took off to Houston in the middle of our episode. Yeah, I had to go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I run a very tight schedule. <laughs> so uh, as you could tell from this rambling podcast. <laughs> um, but we, uh, yeah, I would love to hear from y'all. What, what, what's your favorite candies and what are your least favorite candies? You can email us. Parksandconversation at gmail.com. And uh, please tell your friends that uh, this episode, maybe they don't need to download. But other ones, go for it. Go for it. Dare them. Double dog dare them. Yeah, check out blog.galvanize.com. I have no idea what that is. I think it's like a data science one. I just typed in weird candies, but then I typed in popular candies. There you go. But Tell I use my safe search. You use search. I, 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 oh, come on. It's an amateur hour. All right. What, what, what's the next, uh, next episode? I don't know. I do not have the internet because we had so many problems with the internet. I'm using as little internet as possible at my house. So um, it is season five, episode seven. That's that, correct. That's all, that's all I got. Uh, let me, what just happened? Oh, sorry. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pull up the script and see if I can read it and just guess what the episode would be right this is fun okay. for everybody yeah start uh, start reading it oh i have up. i have it but go ahead i like i like your idea better uh they're talking about the, moving in to their future house being the white house it seems like uh yeah. and then cold open is going to be hard to there's an engagement present uh is this the one no <clears throat> this Excuse is you're me. right this is good podcasting uh so okay <laughs> oh hey now ben's looking for a job they call me municipal bond <laughs> yes <laughs> yes all right okay we're gonna have some barney in this one uh uh tom is gonna ask ben to look over his business plan um and uh yeah okay and insulting him the whole way <laughs> yes 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 you're into boring things um and yes this is great there's a dog park there it is the that's, dog it's park. the it's the dog park yeah that the lot uh leslie and april it's leslie versus april right because leslie wants to preserve the par- spot for a park april who is now somehow over animal control uh wants to make a dog park right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um okay those are distraction waffles, uh, which <laughs> is probably going to be the op- the <laughs> the, uh, the episode title. Um, so there you go. You don't even need to listen next week, guys. Take a week off. All right. I just need to remember that I said that. So all right. We should stop putting our listeners through this. So okay. All right. I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.